New York to Los Angeles, a ticket checker named Tom made his way through the cars. Eventually, he arrived at the luxurious first-class compartment, where he found three passengers. Tom asked to see their IDs, and the three of them handed over their cards. As he scanned the cards, his face contorted in disbelief. One of the IDs was fake. Tom quickly realized that third person's ID was fake. Tom went looking for the person and found out that he had gone to coach number six. When Tom followed him, he found that the coach was empty. He saw something that made his blood run cold. Upon reaching coach number six, Tom was struck by an eerie emptiness as the individual with the counterfeit ID was nowhere to be found. He noticed curious footprints on the wall and became uneasy, wondering what they could signify. Fear gripped him, and he called Yash, the ghost hunter, for assistance. Here, Yash, the ghost hunter, prepares his bike and sets out for the train with his gun. A short distance ahead, Yash notices three paths. Yash can catch the train at any station. Knowing that the train is going from New York to Los Angeles, he decides to take the railway tracks to reach the station. Upon reaching the station, Yash's watch starts beeping loudly. Looking at the station scene, Yash carefully observes the coolie and notices that he doesn't cast any shadow, indicating that he might be the ghost. Yash takes out his gun and apprehends the coolie. If you've also found a ghost, give the video a thumbs up. Just then, the train arrives and Yash boards it. He reaches his destination and meets Tom. Tom leads Yash straight to coach number six, but upon arrival, Yash's watch doesn't detect any signal. It seems like the ghost has moved to another coach. Look at the footprints, they are going towards the left side, which means the ghost has gone towards the left side of the coach. Yash follows the footprints and he enters a coach with passengers sitting inside. As Yash reached there his watch starts beeping loudly, and he realizes that the ghost is hiding in this coach. Yash observes the passengers and notices that all of their feet are pointed in the same direction, except for one pair of feet that are facing the opposite way. He realizes that the person with the opposite facing feet must be the ghost. As Yash takes out his gun, the lights go out, and when it come back on, the ghost is nowhere to be found. After that, Yash follows the signal of his watch and moves forward, reaching the kitchen where three chefs were cooking food. Yash realizes that the ghost might be hiding here. Look closely, the first chef taking samosas out from the hot pan with his bare hands. It found strange since the pan was emitting smoke and had a high temperature. Yash pulled out his gun to confront the chef, but suddenly, the ghost threw the hot pan at him. Yash swiftly dodged it, but in that moment, the chef transformed into a ghost and vanished through the window. The ghost went over the train. How can I catch it now? Yash's watch was receiving signals from above the train. The ghost was walking on top of the train towards the back, and Yash started to follow him from inside the train. Yash can activate the train's emergency brake by pulling the chain, which would bring the train to a halt. He can then grab onto the door and swing himself up, reaching over the train. Yash hurls fire bombs at the ghost, but the ghost deftly evades them. Just then, the train begins to move, and Yash accidentally drops his gun. The ghost quickly jumps off the train, retrieves the gun, and with a flick of his wrist, turns it into two guns. Oh god. This ghost is a magician. He turned my gun into a pair of chopsticks. The ghost throws both the guns in different directions. Remember, Yash had already caught the ghost before arriving here, and it was trapped inside his gun. One gun had the ghost inside it while the other was empty. The gun with the ghost was Yash's, and he quickly made a leap towards the gun and grabbed it just in time. He turned around and ran towards the train as fast as he could. Oh my gosh, this ghost is like a master of hide and seek. It disappears so quickly. Yash starts receiving signals from the ghost on his watch. Following the signal, Yash reaches the storeroom, but it was locked. As he looked at the door, he noticed that there were several antique designs on it, but one of them was different from the rest. All the other designs are circular, but this one is star-shaped. Yash presses the design on the wall and the door creaks open. He steps into the dimly lit storeroom, his watch ticking loudly. He searches the room but finds no sign of the ghost. Yash discovers a locked wooden box and asks Tom for the key. Tom agrees to retrieve it from his office and returns with the key, but Yash notices something is off and realizes that the person in front of him is not Tom. Yash was checking the clothes of the person in front of him, he realized that they were different from the clothes he had seen on Tom a little while ago. As Yash pulls out his gun to catch the fake Tom, he suddenly finds himself stuck to the wall, unable to move. Why you were bothering Tom and what you did to him? I was traveling back to my village from the city. My purse which had my ticket was stolen on the train. When 
the TV asked for my ticket. I couldn't give it. And he threw me off the moving train causing me to die. As a vengeful ghost, I now seek to punish all TT for their injustice. Yash noticed the ghost was causing trouble, so he acted quickly. He threw a firebomb at the ghost, hoping to startle him. Yush pulled out his trusty gun and was able to capture him before he could escape again. You can't punish every TT for what happened to you. With a sense of triumph, Yush took the ghost and imprisoned him in his secret ghostistan. Finally feeling at peace, Yush went to sleep with a sense of satisfaction. Next day, when Joshua comes home from the office, he sees that someone has completely destroyed his house, even though he had locked it and kept the key with him. Then Joshua sees the items he had kept there and realizes that there must be a ghost in his house. Joshua noticed three parrots in his room, but only two of them cast a shadow. He realized that one of the parrots was actually a ghost in disguise. As he was trying to process this, the light suddenly went out, plunging the room into darkness. Feeling frightened and unsure of what to do, Joshua nervously reached for his phone and called Yash, the ghost hunter, for help. I saw three parrots in my room, but I only had two, and only two of them have a shadow. After giving this information, Joshua hangs up. Wow, a ghost and a parrot, this will be fun. Yash took his superbike and headed to Joshua's house. Yash finally reached Joshua's area but felt thirsty, so he stopped to drink some water. As he stopped, his watch was starts beeping loudly. Yash looked around and realized where the ghost was hiding. There were three taps of water, and water was dripping from two of them. However, blood was dripping from the third one, indicating that a ghost was hiding inside. Yash quickly took out his gun, and as the ghost attacked, he caught it before it could do any harm. Looks like this ghost won't even let me drink water in peace. Logical army, this could happen to you as well, so please subscribe to the channel to get my assistance in similar situations. Yash takes his bike from there and reaches Joshua's house. Upon arriving there, Yash's watch was not receiving any signal. It seems like the ghost has escaped from here. Look closely, Joshua had told him that he saw three parrots, but now there are only two. It means that the ghost has left from here. Yash searches for Joshua in the house and reaches the terrace while searching for him. Yash had sharp ears and could hear the sound of someone's heartbeat. It seems like someone is here. Yash looked around and realized that someone was on the terrace and hiding behind something. Look closely, there are only footprints of the cat leading away, there are no footprints coming back, which means the cat is hiding somewhere around here. Yash didn't receive any signal from his watch, indicating that it wasn't a ghost. Just then, Yash also spots the cat's tail. As Yash was trying to catch the cat, it suddenly pounced on him, causing him to lose his balance and fall down. Oh, it's a cat, it has troubled me. Then Yash hears a noise from downstairs and comes out of the house, where he sees Joshua's neighbor shouting loudly. Thief, thief, catch the thief. Yash immediately goes into that house and sees that the whole house is scattered. No thief came here, a ghost came here. As Yash entered the room, he noticed that it looked exactly like Joshua's room, and there were handprints on the ceiling that seemed impossible for a human to make. But before he could investigate further, the handprints disappeared as Yash's watch stopped giving any signals. As Yash stepped out of the room, he heard a strange noise coming from inside the house. Realizing that the ghost had returned, Yash's watch started giving signals again. He quickly rushed back inside the room but was met with a thick cloud of smoke that enveloped him, making it difficult to see. Taking advantage of the smoke, the ghost attacked Yash, lifting him up in the air and throwing him against the wall. Yash's gun fell out of his hand as he struggled to regain his footing. Thinking quickly, he pulled out a firebomb and threw it in the direction of the ghost, causing it to become disoriented. As the smoke cleared, Yash picked up his gun and looked around the room. Despite the smoke disappearing, Yash's watch was still giving signals, indicating that the ghost was still there, lurking somewhere in the room. Yash looks around and understands where the ghost is hiding. Yash sees that the TV is on but not connected to its plug, indicating that the ghost is inside the TV. Yash quickly points his gun at the TV, and the ghost emerges, kicking Yash and fleeing. Yash rises and pursues the ghost, tracking him to a park where he spots four people. He scrutinizes each of them closely and realizes who was the ghost. Yash looks around and spots a man sitting on a bench with his feet upside down, a characteristic that only ghosts have. Yash rushes towards him, but the ghost notices him and runs away. The ghost then enters a nearby house while running. Yash enters the house, following the ghost, but to his surprise, there was no ghost in the house, and his watch was not receiving any signal either. Moreover, there was no other house nearby. 
Yash wonders where the ghost disappeared in such a short time. He examines the house carefully and realizes where the ghost might have disappeared. Inside the house, Yash notices the same painting that he had seen in Joshua's and his neighbor's house. He realizes that there must be something peculiar about this painting. Yash puts his hand inside the painting and discovers a secret passage. Wow! This painting leads to a secret path. That's why my watch was not giving any signal. Yash enters the secret passage and reaches Joshua's house through it. Suddenly, the ghost attacks Yash with full force, causing his gun to fall far away. Hearing the loud noise, Joshua also rushes to the scene. However, he is confused about which Yash is real. I am the real Yash, and he is fake. Shoot him. No, he is fake. Arrest him, Joshua. Joshua notices that the real Yash is the one who is wearing a watch on his right hand, and the fake Yash is not wearing any watch. Joshua quickly tosses his gun to the real Yash, who captures the ghost in his gun and takes it to his ghost land. Finally, Yash goes to sleep, exhausted from the adventure. At around 3 a.m., Daniel was awakened by spine-chilling noises coming from the hall. His heart raced as he slowly made his way towards the source of the disturbance. There were no windows in the hall and the fan was off, yet the chair placed there was moving on its own, and he noticed a shadowy figure sitting on the chair. Daniel got frightened upon seeing all this and immediately called Yash the ghost hunter. Yash woke up from a daze and immediately headed towards Daniel's house. As he looked down from above, he was struck by the sight of two stunning bridges below him. These bridges are absolutely stunning. Yash descended to get a better view and suddenly heard an unusual voice. Come, Yash, come. You can't escape from me today. One of these bridges is real, and the other is a trap. The real one will take you across, but the other will lead you to death. Where have I come? Look closely, in one bridge, the shadow of a tree is moving in the same direction, but in the other bridge, the shadow is moving in a different direction. How is this possible? Yush understood that the bridge with the fake shadow was a trap. Yush immediately shot the fake bridge with his gun, trapping the ghost. Once the ghost was captured, the fake bridge disappeared, and Yush easily took the real bridge to Daniel's house. After reaching Daniel's house, Yush listened attentively to the entire story. He then carefully searched the house and found a camera recording on the table. Yash immediately checked the footage and saw that Daniel was telling the truth. He checked the footage and discovered that it showed the mirror in the room. The mirror reflection revealed a chair and a figure of a ghost sitting on it, confirming Daniel's story. Do you live here alone? No, my wife, Neha, lives here with me. So, where is she? Upon this, Daniel took Yash to his bedroom and told him that his wife's health was not good, so she was sleeping. As soon as Yash entered Daniel's bedroom, he exclaimed, this is not your wife? Look carefully, Yash observed Neha's body and noticed that her feet were facing in the opposite direction to her face. Yash pulled out his gun and pointed it at the ghost. However, the ghost disappeared, taking Yash with him through the window and into the air. Yash struggled to break free as they fought in midair. Eventually, Yash managed to fire his gun, trapping the ghost inside. Yash started plummeting down from a great height and pressed the button to summon his bike. However, the bike got stuck in a tree. Yash continued to fall rapidly but fortunately landed in a nearby swimming pool, which saved his life. Oh my gosh! I finally survived! Thank God! At the same time, Daniel arrived there. If this was a ghost, then where was my wife? Yash, unaware of her location, searched the entire house, but to no avail. The ghost from the bridge, who was trapped in Yash's bottle, spoke up. Yash, you can never find his wife. But I can tell you where she is right now. But I have one condition, you have to set me free. With no other way, Yush agreed to his deal. Yush, the ghost that came here took his wife to the ghost world. They plan to sacrifice her to keep the path between our worlds open forever. Giving the ghost world control over this world. There must be a way to go to that world in this house. Yush, you have to bring the girl back tonight, or she will be killed. And if you get stuck there, you will never be able to come out, as that path will only remain open until tonight. Upon hearing this, Yesha's curiosity was piqued, and he immediately began searching for a way to the ghost world. While searching for Daniel's wife, Yash reached the storeroom, and as soon as he reached there, Yash understood which path led to the other world. Yash entered the storeroom where he found some old things and two old mirrors. 
In one mirror, Yasha's watch appeared on the right, and in the other, it appeared on the left, which seemed impossible. Yash believed that one of the mirrors must lead to the ghost world, and he proved it by touching a fake mirror. Yeah, I found the way to the ghost world. Daniel, you stay here. I'll go get your wife. As Yash jumped into the mirror, he landed in the graveyard, and the path he took to get there disappeared. Oh, the way inside seems to be blocked. It seems like the path keeps changing. I'll first find Daniel's wife and then look for the path. Just then, the ghost guard of the ghost world appeared there and upon seeing Yush, started attacking him with his powers. Yush also began to fight back. But this was the ghost world, and the ghosts here were more powerful. Yush couldn't do anything, and the ghost captured him. Why have you come here? I have come to save a girl whose life is in danger tonight. Who are you to come here without fear? You know you will die. No human has ever survived here. I will rescue the girl and leave. You are very brave. If you answer my question, I will tell you how to reach the girl. Here, there are three graves, and one of them is different from the others. Can you tell me which one is different, A, B, or C? Look at grave B. There is a leaf on it that is not on the other graves. The guard was very pleased with Yasha's answer and told him the way to reach Neha. There are stairs below the grave. You will reach Neha through those stairs. Yash reached Neha through the stairs, where she was trapped in a cage. Yash tried to open the cage gate immediately, but he got a powerful electric shock. Yash quickly fired a fireball and threw a firebomb under the lock, breaking it open. Neha was freed from the cage. Just then, the ghost who brought Neha there appeared and began to attack Yash. He threw fireballs at Yash. But Yash saved himself and then threw a firebomb at the ghost, but it had no effect on him. It seemed that my bombs were not effective because we were in the ghost world. Yash took out his gun and tried to catch the ghost, but his gun was not powerful enough to capture him. My gun was not working here. Then, the bag-carrying ghost said, Set me free, and I will help you to get out of here. Yash freed the ghost, and it created a path for them to escape. Another ghost attempted to stop them, but Josh and Neha had already made it back to the human world through the path created by the first ghost. Yush, this time you didn't let the path stay open forever, but we ghosts will open this path and rule the human world. How long will you keep saving these humans? Meanwhile, Daniel was very happy to see Neha, and Yash went home and fell asleep.